I'm here with Chris from Takahashi. You've got some really neat new products, uh, yeah. some smaller scopes, as well as some bigger stuff behind us here. This is not your first time at Neef, I know no, that. No, I've been but here a couple of times. Many years, um, but you got some new stuff. Uh, yeah. What would you like to talk about today? Um, well, first of all, thank you. No problem, thank Thanks you. Thanks for stopping by. Um, yes, I'm Chris Montemayor. I work for Takahashi America. Um, we do have some new small telescopes. Um, we have updates to the FS60 telescope and the uh, FS76 telescope that use the same body of this new FCT65D telescope. Um, the other two telescopes are updates to the previous telescope that use this body so that we can incorporate a new dedicated reducer for those telescopes. But the FCT65D telescope is a new design uh, telescope. This is a very compact fluorite triplet telescope. It's 65 millimeters of aperture. It's 402 millimeters of focal length natively. Um, you can use this uh, with a variety of extenders um, visually. Uh, the visual uh, color performance of this telescope is very, very similar and may actually exceed our lo much larger TSA 120 telescope. So as a compact visual telescope, this is a fantastic little instrument. And I've used it in comparison with my personal FOA 60Q telescope at home. It's, it's really hard to tell the difference between them visually. So if you want something that's a little more compact than an right. FOA 60, this Travel is a great friendly, choice. Right, exactly. Capable and, of being on one of the smaller mounts, a right, lot right. less to carry around. and. Yeah, like you said, the performance, especially with new camera technologies, yes. it's So that is the big thing. So this accepts our 1.04 multi-flattener. Um, that increases the focal length ever so slightly and also slows the telescope down optically, um, but does create a flat field, okay, for photography. However, we have developed, for use with the those three telescopes, a brand new dedicated reducer that also uses fluorite lens elements. and. This telescope and this reducer combined together to create one of the highest performance compact astrographs available. Nice. Okay, so it is a F4 telescope. It's actually a little bit less than F4, but wow. we round that up to F4. And it's 260 millimeters of focal length. But the spot sizes are vanishingly small. So right. on axis in 11 different color channels, 0.477 micron and tuned to fall away to a little bit uh, more than 3.76 microns at 45 millimeters off axis. Take advantage of those little pixels. Y yes, we, we want to get, we want to produce a telescope that allows you to take advantage of uh, the small pixel full frame astronomy cameras. Right. And we do now, uh, this is provided with a furred ring that is a camera adapter for DSLR cameras. Oh, wow. Popular in Japan, uh, a little bit less popular here in the United States. So um, we also produce a new dedicated uh, direct to M54 mail connection. So you can use that with the ASI 6200 kind of cameras, which use the M54 terminations. Or if you have a duo camera, which also has the M54 extension tubes, that will accommodate that. Um, Sony, like mirrorless, uh, is that also oh, yes, compatible absolutely, as well, yeah. right? So we have adapter. Uh, we produce uh, Nikon and Sony and a couple of different uh, direct camera ad adapters, and that would screw into this particular one okay. that is provided with the reducer itself. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And the back focus on this is? Um, almost every Takashi Astrograph product is 56.2 millimeters of uh, what we refer to as metal back distance. So we have a system that is the telescope and a reducer or flattener, and then a specially sized spacing ring from the back of the special, the, the spacing ring consumes some of the back focus that the different accessories produce, right. leaving only 56.2 millimeters on the back side of that. So if you properly configure a camera with an adapter, um, you can take one single camera and you can swap it from Takashi Telescope to Takashi Telescope. So I can use the same camera on my right. BabyQ, my Epsilon, my TOA 130 telescope. Cool. And I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love the little form factor. I'm coming from uh, having started with smaller telescopes, mm -hmm. working my way up to the telescopes that are fairly large, and now I'm kind of working my way back down as I, I'm getting older, but it's also just being able to get it outside, you yes, know? Sir. Yes, sir. And to have to constantly lug a big telescope around is not always what you want. Uh -huh. It might be something you have as available to you, but having that little compact scope, especially with travel, I'm finding is becoming more important yeah, to me. So, so I personally have a land that I purchased for uh, my personal astronomy. I'm out in a Borla One location. Wow. And having a telescope and a mount that is small enough for me to open the door of my car and place the entire thing inside 
close the door, drive there, and then open the door and take it out and put it on the ground without having to additionally set it up is very important because it yeah. saves you a lot of time. Yes, But I did want to say that these reducers do thread internally into the telescopes, and they do not increase the overall length of the telescope. And that is the reason that these telescopes have the 95 millimeter body. Okay. okay. Now, the 95 millimeter body is uh, popular in Takahashi land, so we have 95 millimeter FCT 65s. Baby Q telescopes also use the same 95 millimeter body, and our FC 100 telescope series uses that same size body as well. And that allows you to move it from one type exactly. to another. Exactly. So you can have one set of rings and a couple of different telescopes, and use one set of rings for a couple of different telescopes. That's amazing, yeah. especially with a higher end product like this to have the ability to swap one thing to another becomes yeah. important as well, I, you want to expand your, your ability, your range of different focal lengths and things like that. To have to buy different you know, parts then on top of that for uh -huh. each scope would become uh, challenging. Yes. So it's appreciated that you keep that in mind and Certainly. try to streamline your product line like that. This is a FSQ85 Baby Q telescope. Um, you can use this at the native 450 millimeter focal lengths at F5. Uh, for visual, um, you can we produce a 1.5 extender for this telescope that allows you to use it at 800 millimeters the focal length. Um, it does optically slow the telescope down a little bitty bit, but once again, it's a visual product. Right. But we did introduce a dedicated reducer for the Baby Q telescope, okay. and this improves the off-axis performance of the Baby Q telescope, allowing it to be used with a greater range of cameras. Um, this operates at f3.8 at 330 millimeters of focal nice. length. So we have several different focal lengths um, that you can choose from. And baby cues are really versatile. Uh, two ways you can use them for visual, actually three ways that you can use them for photography. Cool, yeah. wow, that's amazing. So here we have a couple of different things. This is our new TPL eyepiece line. Um, these are non-symmetrical plossils. Um, they're very high quality and they're optimized to have a the sharpest, crispest image possible with the most contrast that a telescope can produce that is preserved in this design. Uh, plossils do produce uh, some off-axis aberration, so um, these have a purposefully limited field of view that is 48 millimeters across. That we really, people are going to use eyepieces, we feel like, uh, as planetary eyepieces or ways to view the moon, so they really want the crispest, clearest, and brightest and most colorful center image, and this preserves that across our, our telescope line. We have a new 7.5 by 50 finder scope, a little bit higher quality optically than our previous 7 by 50 finder. There is a version of that that has a uh, dedicated GT50 rear end that can be used with eyepieces directly, any of these eyepieces, but will also accept planetary cameras um, so that you can use this as a guiding scope. Some of our older telescopes had uh, extenders for them and we have revised some of the extender lines. So we have a two times orthoscopic extender, a four times orthoscopic extender. If you're a owner or a fan of the TOA te telescope series, this is a fantastic thing to have because it changes your 1,000 millimeter TO TOA 130 into a 4,000 millimeter telescope. Wow. Okay. That's <laughs> a lot <laughs> With of focal length. <laughs> very crisp and very clear images. And we also have another line of dedicated NC 0.85 reducers. This was a surprise to me. Um, this arrived um, with our uh, fellows from Japan, and um, this is also a uh, reducer designed to be used with the FS60 CP, that's the new version of the FS60, FCT 65D, that's the new 65 millimeter triplet, and the FC76 DP. So there are a couple of different reducer options for those telescopes that I was unaware of. I will say, Takahashi developed, about three years ago now, a TOA 645 flattener for our TOA 130 and 150 telescopes. This flattener produces spot sizes on axis that are less than one micron across, less than two microns at 26 millimeters off axis, less than three microns at 45 millimeters off axis. This stays fully corrected to below five microns without vignette out to 60 millimeters. There is virtually no camera that consumers can purchase that the telescope does not outperform. So you can combine a TOA-130 or a TOA-150 telescope with a flattener on it um, with any camera you want. And future Full proof. frame, yep. medium format, 60 millimeter by 60 millimeter chips. Wow. Um, so thank you very much, Chris, for your time, and uh, super happy to be back here at NEEF 2025. For those of you who are not able to make it, uh, looking forward to seeing what comes in the years 
ahead. Thank you so much. It's right. great to see you again. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. you. Have a good day. If you're still watching and like videos like this one, please consider becoming a Patreon patron. Memberships start as low as $3 per month, with benefits including opportunities to ask questions of our guests. Also, please consider to like, subscribe, and share this video to help us bring the universe even closer than you think.